On day one, I spawn in as a baby Pokemon in a forest. Pika Pika, I'm a Pikachu. As a baby Pikachu, I only had four hearts, but I could use awesome electric type attacks. Whoa, look at all the Pokemon around me. I wonder what other cool Pokemon are out there. Suddenly, I heard a rustling sound coming from some tall grass nearby, and out of nowhere, a Tauros jumped out. This is going to be easy. Prepare to lose. I tried using my electric moves on it, but the Tauros barely took any damage. It retaliated with a strong tackle, which left me with just one heart. The Tauros began to charge at me again, and I panicked. I closed my eyes, bracing myself for impact, when suddenly I heard a voice. Charmander, use Ember. A blast of fire shot out and hit the Tauros, causing it to run away in a panic. What the? I looked up and saw a boy and a Charmander walking towards me. Hi there, I'm Ash, and this is my buddy, Charmander. We saw you were in trouble and just had to help. Thank you. I thought I was a goner. We're on our way to challenge the first gym. Why don't you come with us? That sounds awesome. Ash and I spent day two training together against wild Rattatas. All right. Silio, use quick attack. I swiftly charged at the Rattata, taking it out in just one hit. Just then, I felt a strong power deep inside of me, and I evolved into a full-sized Pikachu with 10 hearts. Additionally, I learned a cool new Thundershock attack. Way to go, Silio! You're getting real strong. As we wrapped up training for today, we suddenly noticed a large shadow from above growing bigger and bigger. It was a massive Pokemon. W what are you? I am Rayquaza. I seek to bring balance to this world. What's that supposed to mean? Pokemon are ideal creatures. We are strong yet intelligent. Trainers have exploited us Pokemon for too long. Imagine a world ruled by Pokemon. That is the world I will create. What? But what will happen to us trainers then? Excellent question. Allow me to demonstrate. Before we could react, Rayquaza a blasted Ash with a hyper beam, turning him to stone. No! Are you not glad I freed you from your trainer? I guess I'll have to deal with you too then. Rayquaza shot out another powerful blast. Before I knew it, I was hit hard and immediately blacked out. On day three, Charmander woke me up in the middle of a deep forest. Cilio, oh thank god you're alive. I thought I had nobody left. I'm fine, but... Ash. Ugh, there has to be a way to get him back. I know it. I heard there's a legendary Pokemon out there that's super powerful. Maybe if we find it, they could help us. We decided to set out looking for any clues on the legendary Pokemon when we spotted a city at the edge of the forest. As we arrived, we heard a loud scream coming from the nearby Pokemon Center. Without hesitation, we rushed over to see what was happening when we saw two humans in weird clothing and a Meowth sneak away with a ton of stolen Pokeballs. Wait, what are you doing? Prepare for trouble. And make a double to protect the world from devastation to unite all peoples within our nation to denounce the evils of truth and love to extend our reach to the stars above jesse james team rocket blasts off at the speed of light surrender now or prepare to fight meow that's right team rocket who are you guys what how can you not know who we are we'll show you twerps what team rocket is made of go coughing go ekans if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. Cilio, let's do this. Charmander unleashed a stream of fire towards the Ekans, while I followed up with an electric attack. Charmander and I fought in perfect sync. Together, we charged up a final powerful attack and sent it right at Team Rocket. We're, We're blasting, blasting off again! Off again. What a weird bunch. That was quite impressive. You two make an awesome team. You should come challenge me at my gym sometime. I'll give you something cool if you win. You've got yourself a deal. On days four through seven, Charmander and I began to head towards the first gym when we came across a huge open meadow. This place was perfect for training with Pokemon and getting stronger. So we decided to build our base here. I started collecting as much wood as possible and made sure to craft myself a wooden pickaxe. After that, I also made a set of stone tools so I could get even more resources. This is the first step to becoming the best like no one ever was. I then started working on my base, making it super cool and even adding a Pokemon battlefield outside. I also added a house for Charmander so he would feel at home too. As I finished up, I noticed something from the corner of my eye. It was a Pokemon. <coughs> Whoa, who are you? I approached it, but before I could get close, it flew away. Wait, don't go! I took off after it, running as fast as I could, but the Pokemon was incredibly fast, and I couldn't keep up. Eventually, it darted into the woods and disappeared from sight. Disappointed, I turned around to head back to my base when I realized I was surrounded by an army of zombies and skeletons. Oh boy, not good. The mob started attacking me, but using both my sword and my electric attacks, I took down one after another. My health was dwindling, 
so I charged up all the energy I had left and used a powerful discharge attack. Whoa! Did I just learn a new move? Awesome! I then headed back home to tell Charmander all about what I had seen. On days 8 through 11, Charmander and I were finally ready to take on the first gym. We headed into the gym, where the guy from before was waiting for us. What took you so long? I'm Brock, the rock hard trainer. Let's see if you could break through my rock solid Pokemon. Brock sent out a massive onyx, and we started battling. Charmander and I put our everything into it. In the heat of the battle, Charmander suddenly began to glow with energy. What? What's happening to me? Just then, Charmander evolved into a Charmeleon. Whoa! Way to go, Charmander! Or should I say Charmeleon? Charmeleon was much stronger than before, and it wasn't long before he took out the Onyx, winning us the battle. Wow, that was some impressive fighting. You definitely earned this. Brock then handed us our very first badge. Collect eight more of these, and you can take on the strongest trainer there is, the champion. If you beat them, you will become unstoppable. Awesome! We'll defeat Rayquaza and get Ash back in no time. We arrived back home on day 12, but I was so tired from all the battling that I slept through the whole day. In my sleep, I had a dream where I found myself at the peak of a huge tower. There were statues of Pokemon trainers all around me. Suddenly, Rayquaza appeared right in front of me. Welcome, Cilio. It seems you have become stronger. Join me, Cilio, and we can live in a perfect world. A world where Pokemon can finally reach their full potential with no futile trainers to shackle our true power. I'll I'll never join you. People in Pokemon are happy together. You can't just kill them. They're our friends. Well then, I will kill the champion and become unbeatable unlike any other. Without the champion to stop me, I will rid this world of every last human and create the perfect world. Just try and stop me. If you want to be together with humans, your only hope is to collect the badges from each gem and head for the champion at the Pokemon League. Try and stop me there if you dare. If your conviction is not strong enough, you will never be able to defeat me. Rayquaza then charged right at me, knocking me out. I woke up on days 13 through 16, determined to find the next gym. If I need to get those gym badges in order to stop Rayquaza, then that's what I'm going to do. I traveled for hours through forests and deserts until I finally ran into a huge city full of people. Whoa, this place is amazing. And there are so many cool new Pokemon. Out of nowhere, I bumped into a Rowlet, but it was no regular Rowlet. It was a super rare shiny Rowlet. Whoa, so shiny. The Rowlet handed me a bunch of tasty berries. Mm, delicious, thank you so much. But before I knew it, a cage fell right on top of Rowlet and Team Rocket jumped out from behind a building. Prepare for trouble. Make a dump. Are you seriously gonna repeat that every time we meet? How dare you interrupt us. Pesky twerp. Stealing this shiny Pokemon will please our boss. Now it's time for our escape. See you later, loser. Before I could do anything, they disappeared into the city crowd. No! I have to stop those punks. On days 17 through 21, I decided to take on the second gym. Once I've got the badge, I'll get Rowlet back from Team Rocket. I headed into the gym, and I couldn't believe my eyes. Standing in front of me was Team Rocket. Huh? What's the twerp doing here? You're not here to challenge us, are you? We're the gym leaders, you see. Well, this is perfect. I'll beat you and save Rowlet. Bring it on. You'll have to get through me first. Meowth and I started battling. He got in a couple good hits, but ultimately he was no match for my electric moves. I charged up one last Thundershock and shot it at Team Rocket. Ugh, not again. We're, We're blasting, blasting off, off again. again. With that, I earned yet another gem badge and could free Rowlet. How about we be friends? I have a really cool base you could stay at. Rowlet, Rowlet. We headed back home on days 22 through 25, and I started working on a house just for Rowlet. I decorated it with leaves, bamboo, and other things that Rowlet enjoyed. Finally, I also added a sweet berry farm since Rowlet really liked berries. I'm glad you like it. And if you like it too, why don't you hit the subscribe button? As a thanks, Rowlet gave me a bunch of colored wool, which gave me an idea. I started working on a huge Pikachu statue. You. I wanted Rayquaza to know that we wouldn't just let him win without a fight. I had only started working on the bottom of the statue, but it was already looking awesome. I had just finished the first part of the statue when I noticed a pink blur quickly flying past me. Yeah. You again? This time, I won't let you get away. I chased after the mysterious Pokemon on days 26 through 30. We eventually arrived at a cave that was filled with glowing crystals and various rock and steel type Pokemon. Yeah. Mew dropped a stack of iron before quickly teleporting away. Uh, 
thanks. What is the deal with that Pokemon? That was Mew. A Pokemon with unimaginable power. It sees potential in you. You must be some special Pokemon. I'm Cynthia. I'm just another Pokemon trainer. I'm sure I'll see you around. Could that be the legendary Pokemon that can bring back Ash? But I couldn't finish my thoughts because I realized that the Pokemon living in this cave had covertly surrounded me. Oh boy. You guys do not seem happy. I tried fighting a few off, but my electric attacks didn't seem to hurt them much. So I made a run for it and hid behind a big boulder. There, I used the iron that Mew gave me to craft an iron sword and pickaxe, as well as an iron helmet and chest plate to keep me protected. Time for payback. I jumped out from behind the rock and used my sword to fight off the aggressive Pokemon. Their rock and steel attacks still hurt a lot, but I didn't let it phase me. It wasn't long before they were all defeated. I'm coming for you, Rayquaza. I made it out of the cave on days 31 through 35 and found myself at a village by the sea. It's time to take on the next gym. I walked straight to the gym and made it to the leader, Misty. She was a water type specialist with a super strong Gyarados. Oh no, I hope I'm ready for this. Thankfully, my electric typing was super effective against her Pokemon. This meant that my attacks really hurt her Gyarados. I landed a final critical hit, taking down the giant Gyarados, winning me the battle. Awesome! I already have three badges. As a prize for beating her, Misty gave me a TM containing the move Thunderbolt. I could now summon powerful bolts of lightning to fight enemies. Electrifying! I started making my way home when I noticed a dark cloud of smoke in the distance. It was coming straight from my base. Oh no! My friends! I arrived back home on days 36 through 39 to see Rayquaza destroying my base and hurting my friend. Silly old help! No! You won't get away with this! I admire your bravery, little Pikachu, but you're no match for me. Submit to my rule or pay the price. Never! I charged at the Rayquaza using all of my power to deal as much damage as possible, but my attacks didn't even leave a scratch. The Rayquaza easily knocked me several blocks away with just a small hit. Pathetic. Pokemon like you will never be strong, and those Pokemon must be eradicated. Rayquaza began to charge up a powerful Hyper Beam, and I knew I had to get out of there fast. I turned and ran as fast as I could as I heard a loud explosion right behind me. Coward! You can run all you want. I will show no mercy to your beloved friends. I knew trying to fight Rayquaza now would only get me killed, so I would have to save my friends later. I ran until I couldn't take another step when I heard a familiar voice calling my name. Tilio, are you okay? Rayquaza. He destroyed my home and took my friends. Hmm, the situation is worse than I thought. It's time for you to seek out Mew. Mew? But how? In an ultra wormhole. It won't be easy, but I know you can do it. Good luck, Celio. With those words, Cynthia turned and disappeared into the distance, leaving me with more questions than answers. But one thing was clear. I had to find Mew in order to get stronger and save my friends. I spent days 40 through 44 looking for an ultra wormhole. I had wandered around for hours when suddenly I saw a glowing portal in the distance. That has to be an ultra wormhole. I started making my way over to the portal when I heard a voice coming from behind. Not so fast. Twerp. It's time for some payback. And this time, we brought a special present just for you. Before I could respond, Team Rocket sent out a massive Golurk. Aren't we generous? Now, Golurk. Take him down! No chance! You're going down! I was confident I could take the Golurk, but I quickly realized that my attacks had no effect on him. Before I could react, Golurk slammed his fist at me, almost taking me out in a single hit. Uh-oh, I might be in trouble. The Golurk swung its fist, knocking me back. As I looked up, I saw the Golurk towering over me. It's over, twerp. Surrender now. You'll make an excellent present for the boss. But just before the Golurk could land the finishing blow, a bright light engulfed me, and I was pulled through the Ultra Wormhole! No! I woke up in a mysterious dimension on days 45 through 48. I looked around when in the corner of my eye, I spotted Mew! 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 I think it wants me to follow it. I followed Mew to what looked to be a huge obstacle course. Mew flew to the other side and looked at me as though I should follow it. Well, here goes nothing. The obstacle course was hard, and each time I failed it, it seemed to amuse Mew. Mew! I'm glad someone's enjoying this. After several hours, I finally made it through the obstacle course flawlessly, and once again, Mew flew away. I followed Mew to a large plateau, which seemed to be completely empty. Again, Mew flew to the other side of the plateau, so I followed it. Well, this is easy, but out of nowhere, I was hit in the face by an invisible wall. I realized that this was an invisible maze. Just then, a huge ultra beast appeared behind me and started chasing me. I was wrong! This is not easy! I ran through the maze with the ultra beast 
is flying right behind me, bumping into invisible walls everywhere. Finally, I seemed to reach a dead end. The Ultra Beast slowly approached me, charging up a strong attack. I had to figure something out before I was finished. I focused, and just like that, I learned a new double team attack, producing tons of Pikachu copies. This confused the Ultra Beast and allowed me to make my escape. Before long, I had made it to the end of the maze. <coughs> Ugh, are we done yet? You led me to the final island and flew to the other side again. This island was covered in pressure plates connected to TNT. Looks like only a few plates are not rigged with TNT. I'll have to choose my steps carefully. I started making my way through the field of pressure plates, choosing each step very carefully. I had just one more block to go, so I closed my eyes and took a leap of faith. And to my relief, I landed safely on the other side. Suddenly, Mew teleported us to a familiar place. It was the tower from my dream, and towering over me was Rayquaza. How nice of you to visit, Cilio. Time to end this. On days 49 through 52, I stood face to face with Rayquaza. Rayquaza charged at me with full force. I thought my journey would end here, but to my surprise, Mew's training had actually paid off. I was much more agile than before, and my attacks actually seemed to damage Rayquaza. I used a combination of thunderbolts and quick attacks to hit Rayquaza as much much as possible. Fighting me is pointless. You are just a puny Pikachu. At that moment, Rayquaza shot out a strong hyper beam, leaving me at just half a heart. No, this time I won't run. I gathered my remaining strength and charged straight at Rayquaza, landing a powerful blow. How can this be? I am the strongest being in this universe. No! Just then, I felt a surge of energy inside me and gained an additional five hearts. Now that's super effective. Him. But something wasn't right. As Rayquaza faded away, it transformed into a ditto. Wait, so that wasn't really a Rayquaza? Oh man! Well done, Cilio! You have proven to me that you are worthy! You can talk now? I want you to have this! It is a Thunderstone! Should you use it, you will evolve and gain tremendous power! Whoa! Thanks! So, are you the legendary Pokemon that can free my friend Ash? Yep, that would be me! But I cannot help your friend right now! Only a true hero can undo Rayquaza's curse! If you collect enough gem badges, I will show you how to undo the curse! Until then, farewell, Cilio! Suddenly, I woke up in the overworld, and I knew exactly what I had to do! I made it back home on days 53 through 56, and saw my home completely trashed, and my friends really hurt! Ugh, Rayquaza will pay! Is that so? I'm tired of toying with you! You. I have other matters to attend to. Not to worry, my henchmen will take good care of you. As he said this, a black Greninja jumped down from one of the houses and charged right at me. He was super agile, so it was really hard to even land a hit. I used my double team attack to try to confuse it, but the Greninja wasn't easily fooled. It took out all of my decoys in a single hit. The battle was intense, and both sides were using all their abilities to their advantage. I had to stay on my toes, dodging and weaving around the Greninja's attacks while trying to land some of my own. Finally, I landed a critical thunderbolt, which paralyzed the Greninja. With this advantage, I could easily finish him off with one final thunderbolt. I did it! The base is ours again! I rushed to help my friends and made sure they're okay. Thankfully, no one was too hurt. I started repairing our base, even adding upgrades to keep it safe from future attacks. Next time, Rayquaza will think twice before attacking our home. I also decided to continue working on my Pikachu statue. I used all the yellow wool I had left to work on the torso. It was coming along really well. I'm so proud of how the base is coming together. I decided to take on the fifth gym on days 57 through 60. I had traveled to a forest village full of dark type Pokemon. I have a feeling the gym leader likes dark types. I made my way to the gym and challenged Marnie the dark type gym leader to a battle. Her Umbreon was really strong and dealt some serious damage, but I could feel that my training had really paid off as I was dealing loads of damage. Her dark type moves were no joke, but I was able to evade most of them and counter with some high voltage attacks. It wasn't long before her Umbreon was defeated. We're halfway there. After that, I continued exploring. On my journey, I found a huge cave that led deep underground, so out of curiosity, I followed it. It was really dark, but I could make out a blue shimmer coming from one of the cave walls. It was diamonds! I mined all that I could find and got to crafting. I made myself a diamond pickaxe, sword, axe, and even some diamond leggings and boots. I bet this boosts my attack and defense stats. I headed back up and made my way across a desert. It wasn't long until I saw another town in the distance, but something was off. 
It's quiet. Too quiet. I made my way closer to the town on day 61 through 63. When it hit me, all the town's inhabitants had been turned to stone. Oh no! What happened here? Requeza happened. I turned around to see a Lucario approaching me. My trainer used to be this town's gym leader. Then Requeza showed up. He talked about creating a new world without any humans. That sounds horrible. When we tried to resist him, he turned everyone into stone just like that. I was able to escape him, but Corinna, my trainer, wasn't so lucky. I'm so sorry, but don't worry. I will defeat Rayquaza and we'll get her back in no time. In the meantime, how about you stay at my base? Thank you. That sounds nice. Lucario and I headed back home, and I immediately started working on a house just for him. I built another house next to mine, building it to fit his taste. I built him his very own dojo and added a gem so he could train his fighting moves. Wow. Thanks, Filio. This will do nicely. Please, let me repay you for your kindness. Lucario handed me the fifth gem badge. Wow. I wish I could have battled your trainer for it. But maybe I'll get the chance once we've beaten Rayquaza. On day 64 through 67, I was out exploring when I came across a weird totem sitting out in the open. That's weird. I better investigate. I took a step closer to examine the totem when suddenly I heard a snap. Before I knew it, I was locked inside a cage and Team Rocket emerged from behind a bush. Ugh, not you again. Well, well, well. Looks like the cat got the mouse. Finally, the boss will reward us handsomely for bringing you to him. Team Rocket took me back to their headquarters and led me to a massive hall. I could see an imposing figure sitting across the room. What is the meaning of this? Boss, we've brought you a gift. What am I supposed to do with a puny Pikachu? Uh, we thought you might want it for research or something. Research? You three are useless. Throw these imbeciles in the Colosseum. A group of rocket grunts grabbed all of us and threw us in a massive arena. Just then, the gates to the arena exploded and a strong looking Mewtwo walked out of the rubble. Uh-oh. This is bad. Cilio, do something. Although Team Rocket had gotten me into a bunch of trouble, I couldn't just leave them to die. Don't worry. We're getting out of here alive. I started fighting the Mewtwo, but I quickly realized that he was way too strong for me. My electric moves were no match for his psychic abilities. Ugh, it can't end like this. Before I could react, Mewtwo threw a barrage of psychic beams at me, leaving me on low health. I had to think of something fast. I used my double team attack to confuse Mewtwo, keeping him distracted. Quick, follow me. We ran for the gates, narrowly escaping Mewtwo. We ran past doors and hallways, alarms blaring all around us. Eventually, we ended up in a room with a glowing portal. Well, this is our only hope. Uh, you go first. Ugh, whatever. I jumped into the portal, prepared to face whatever was on the other side. I woke up in the nether on day 68 through 72. This place is scary. How do we get back? Let's split up. We'll cover more bases. Shout if you find anything. Jesse and James paired up, so I decided to go with Meowth. We traveled the nether region, looking for any signs of a portal. Cilio! 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 Ugh, what? Look what I found. Meowth pointed at a massive deposit of ancient debris. Whoa! Good job! Time to get myself an upgrade. I mined all the debris when I heard a voice behind us. Hey there, I haven't seen you around this place before. Are you here to challenge my trial? You're what now? My trial. I'm Kiawe, the leader around these parts. If you pass, I'll give you a gym badge. I'll also show you to my portal so you can get back home. I'm in. What's the trial? There's a terrible monster lurking in the depths of this dungeon. Find it and slay it. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you handle this one, Silio. Kiawe pointed me in the right direction, and I headed off. It wasn't long before I found the massive netherite monstrosity. Uh, this might be harder than I thought. The monstrosity charged at me, and we began to fight. It was incredibly strong, but also pretty slow. I used this to my advantage to evade his attacks and strike him where I could. My electric attacks didn't seem to hurt much, so I used my sword to deal as much damage as I could. Finally, I landed a critical hit right onto the monstrosity's head, taking it down. I passed the trial. I can't wait to tell Kiawe. I returned to find Team Rocket and Kiawe waiting for me. Well, well done, Cilio. You deserve this. Oh, and the portal's over there. Feel free to use it. Together, Team Rocket and I stepped through the portal, finally returning to the overworld. We spun back in the overworld in a Badlands biome on day 73 through 75. Suddenly, the sky grew dark, and a shadow formed over us. I looked up and saw Rayquaza towering over us. You have been meddling with my plants for long enough. It's time I got rid of you. Don't worry, Cilio. We'll help you out. With a single blast, Rayquaza hit Team Rocket, sending them flying. Not again! Now where was I?
Oh yes, prepare to die! Rayquiza chased after me, sending strong beams of energy my way. I dodged as many attacks as I could, but I wasn't fast enough. Rayquiza struck me with his claws, dealing a devastating blow. Just as I thought it was over, I heard a voice call out. Dragonite, use Dragon Rush. I opened my eyes to find Rayquaza in a state of weakness. Come on, we don't have all day. I followed the mysterious trainer to safety as he led me to a village that was completely destroyed. Phew, that was close. I'm Leon, the gym leader of this town. Or at least what's left of it. Yeesh, what happened here? Yeah, this town's definitely seen better days. Since Rayquaza turned all the trainers here to stone, the Pokemon have gone rogue. Gigantic Dynamax Pokemon have been wreaking havoc here, destroying our home. That's terrible. We have to do something. I was hoping you'd say that. There's a Dynamax then not far from here. With your help, we could stop the Dynamax Pokemon from creating more chaos. Say no more. Let's go. On day 76 through 78, Leon took me to the Dynamax den. Down here. Follow me. We headed inside and found ourselves in a massive cave-like structure. At that moment, we heard loud footsteps approaching. Prepare yourself. This could get ugly. Just then, an absolutely gigantic gorilla boom emerged from the depths of the den. Without hesitation, Leon sent out his Dragonite and began to fight the gorilla boom. I joined in on the action, dealing as much damage as I could. Thanks to its gargantuan size, the gorilla boom had a ton of health. But we stood our ground. Out of nowhere, the gorilla boom swung its fist right at Leon, knocking him into a wall. The gorilla boom charged up another attack, aiming at Leon. Before the Rillaboom could deal the finishing blow, I spotted a giant crystal in the back of the cave. That must be where the Dynamax Pokemon are getting their powers from. I quickly made my way over to it and dug my pickaxe into it, destroying the crystal. And just like that, the Rillaboom returned to its normal size. Wow, you did it, kid. You saved me and returned all the Dynamax Pokemon back to normal. I think you've more than earned this. Leon handed me the seventh gym badge. Only one more to go. I finally returned home on days 79 through 82. It's good to be back. I got to work, crafting netherite ingots, and once I had enough, I used them to upgrade my diamond tools to netherite. As I finished upgrading, I heard a familiar voice behind me. I turned around to see Team Rocket. Whoa, what do you want? We don't want trouble. After you rescued us, we realized you're not so bad after all. We want to help you, if you let us. Uh, I guess so. Why don't I make you guys a place to stay? I started working on a house for Team Rocket. Now that they were part of the team, they deserved a house that felt like home. I also built them their very own hot air balloon. Wow, this place looks great. Thanks so much, Silio. You know, you only need one more badge to challenge the champion. The final gym leader lives on an island not far from here. Well, I know where I'm going next. On days 83 through 86, I traveled across the ocean looking for the final gym. Eventually, I saw it on the horizon, the island I had been looking for. But as I drew closer, I realized it was surrounded by huge walls. I arrived at the gates when I heard a voice echo from a speaker. State your business, Pikachu. I'm Silio, and I've come to challenge your gym. Sorry, pal. I can't let you in. No one enters or leaves as long as that Rayquaza is roaming around. Please, if I earn your badge, I can finally challenge the champion and stop Rayquaza once and for all. Fine. I'll let you in, but I'm watching you. The gates disappeared, and I made my way inside. I was met by the final gym leader, Blue. Let's get this over with. Follow me. Blue led me to a small battle area and sent out his Pokemon, a Blastoise. You may have defeated the other gym leaders, but I warn you, I am much stronger than they are. Blastoise, use Hydro Pump! We started battling, and I could tell he wasn't lying. He was incredibly strong, and his Blastoise barely took any damage despite my super effective attack. I sent a barrage of Thunderbolts at the Blastoise, which seemed to knock it back. Oh no you don't! Blastoise, use Surf! The Blastoise suddenly filled the whole field with water, making it hard for me to move around. I knew I had to act fast. I charged up my electricity and fired a powerful Thunderbolt into the pool, causing the electricity to surge through it. Blastoise was hit hard, and I knew this was my chance. I fired one last thunderbolt at Blastoise, finally taking it out. Woohoo! I beat the final gym! I... I can't believe it! You beat me! I guess this belongs to you. Blue handed me the eighth and final gym badge, which meant I had collected them all! You're a strong one! If anyone can defeat that horrible Rayquaza, it's you! You better get going, Silio. Smell you later! With that, I headed back home. There was something I had to take care of before fighting the champion. I made it home on days 87 through 91, and found Mew waiting for me. You did it, Silio!
Basilio! You got all eight badges, proving that you are indeed the true hero! Without a word, Mew darted away into the forest! Wait, where are you? Ugh, why does she always do this? I followed her into the forest, and we soon came across a small glade. Wait, I recognize this place. This is... <gasps> in front of me stood the statue of Ash. Mew flew over to me and motioned for me to touch the statue. I hesitated, but did as she said. As I touched the statue, a bright light shot out from it, and suddenly, Ash began to move. Uh, uh, what happened? Pikachu, you saved me! Ash, you're alive! I can't believe it worked! Ah, thanks so much, buddy! I don't know what I'd have done without you! Together, we headed back home and greeted all our friends. Ash, I can't believe it! You did it, Cilio! I've missed you so much, Ash! I've missed you too, buddy! Now, how about we go train, just like old times? We headed over to the battlefield and started training. Charmeleon and I worked hard, and it wasn't long before Charmeleon started glowing. Could it be? I watched as Charmeleon grew into a mighty Charizard. Whoa, thanks so much, Ash. I feel so powerful. Way to go, buddy. I started days 92 through 95 off by working on my statue. I placed the finishing blocks, finalizing the majestic Pikachu statue. It looked incredible. I'm so happy with how this turned out. With the statue finished, it was finally time to head to the Pokemon League. It didn't take long until I saw a huge mountain in the distance with the Pokemon League sitting at its peak. Finally, this is it. I walked into the Pokemon League, prepared to face whoever was on the other side. I stepped into the halls of the League and came face to face with the champion. Have you been keeping well? First, I must say I'm impressed with what you've accomplished. Together, you overcame all the challenges you faced, however difficult. It means that you've triumphed over any personal weakness, too. The power you learned, I can feel it emanating from you. But that's enough talk. Let's get on with why you're here. As the Pokemon League champion, I accept your challenge. Cynthia sent out an incredibly strong Garchomp, but as we were about to battle, the walls started shaking. What's going on? The walls exploded and a big menacing figure emerged. We finally meet, champion. Cynthia stepped forward, her Garchomp at the ready. I'm afraid that won't be necessary. Everything has fallen into place just as I planned it. Once I eliminate you, there will be nobody to stop me from creating the ideal world. One where Pokemon reign supreme, and humans are nothing but a distant memory. I will not let you get away with this! <laughs> you are powerless to stop me. Watch as I demonstrate the full extent of my power! With lightning fast speed, Rayquaza launched an attack that took out Cynthia's Garchomp in a single hit. You! You monster! As for you, little Pikachu. You may have made it this far, but your journey ends here. Witness as I turn your precious champion to stone right before your very eyes. Rayquaza charged up another hyper beam and sent it right at Cynthia, turning her to stone. No! Ha 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 ha! It's finally done! Everything is ready for the creation of a new world. Rayquaza let out a massive blast, and before I knew it, I passed out. I woke up on days 96 through 98 in the middle of a desolate wasteland, so this is Rayquaza's new world. I have to find my friends. I arrived back home to what was left of my base, and to my relief, my friends were all okay. Thank goodness you're okay. We saw what happened from a distance and feared the worst. We were lucky to survive. Cilio, Rayquaza might seem unstoppable, but we know if anyone can stop him, it's you. You're the strongest Pokemon we know. <laughs> and we'll be with you every step of the way. With that, I felt ready to head into battle. Before leaving, I decided to prepare before the big fight. As I looked through my stuff, I found something that I'd almost forgotten. It was the Thunderstone that Mew had given me. I think it's time I gave myself a little boost. I took out the stone and held it tight. Suddenly, I started feeling a strong surge of energy emanating from the stone. At that moment, I evolved into a big and strong Raichu. It's time I showed Rayquaza what I'm made of. On day 99, I finally made it to Rayquaza's tower. I approached the tower, when suddenly Mewtwo came down and landed right in front of me. I believe you and I have some unfinished business. It's time I ended your miserable little adventure. I won't let you do that. What? A gym leader? And he's not alone. You might be strong. But so are we, and there are a lot more of us. Huh. Fine, so be it. Sidio, you go fight Rayquaza. We'll keep Mewtwo busy. I did as Brock said and headed into the ruins, prepared to face Rayquaza. On day 100, I finally entered the ruins where Rayquaza was waiting for me. It's over, Rayquaza. I'm taking you down and returning the world to how it was. Ha! It's already over. I have created the perfect world. 
Must please just try to defeat me. You're going down! Rayquaza charged at me with full force. Rayquaza launched a barrage of attacks at me, but I countered with a set of strong thunderbolts. The battle was fierce and relentless. We both gave it our all, but Rayquaza seemed to have the upper hand. He landed a strong swipe, knocking me down. Just as Rayquaza started sending a final devastating beam my way, Team Rocket appeared out of nowhere and jumped in front of me to shield me from Rayquaza's attack. We came to help. We've done nothing but hurt people. It's time we do something right. Just like that, they sacrificed themselves so that I could keep fighting. I got back up and faced Rayquaza once more. This time, I battled harder than ever before. Fighting is pointless. Bow down to your new leader. Never. I gathered my last strength and released a strong thunderbolt right at Rayquaza, leaving him paralyzed. I took my chance and managed to land the final blow, defeating Rayquaza. I looked around as the world had turned back to normal. You did it, Cilio! You saved the world! Thank you, Cilio. We're truly grateful. Now, how about we finish that champion battle? You're on!